look at Hendricks. Mm-hmm. He, when he fought Robbie, fractured shin, torn bicep. <laughs> he had a fractured shin too? Fractured shin. And during the fight or from the fight? From training. In training, he was fractured shin, torn bicep, partially torn bicep, would tore all the way during the fight, and uh, didn't even blink. Didn't complain one time. The only way I found out was just kind of like in passing. He was just joking about it. You know, any other athlete, most of the other athletes, they're canceling that fight. They're pushing it back three months, six months. You know, then that's, and then Johnny goes out there and is able to get a win because of that mental toughness. And that's one of the things that makes Johnny so fucking great is that physically, I mean, he's a really strong dude, but he's not tall he's not long you know, he's no. got fast hands you know he is fast but his feet aren't very fast he doesn't cut angles or move his head movement too well it's his his main it's his brain it's his mentality he's got that championship mindset that's just been ground into him through a yeah. whole lifetime of wrestling well he taught also his dad's a fucking psycho that's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he, you know it's funny he said, well he had two options or three options wrestling wrestling or wrestling <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you could wrestle, or you could wrestle, or you could wrestle. And, uh, you know, like how he made him do, you know, push-ups and sit-ups and chin-ups and shit when he was a little boy. He was yeah. doing fucking 500 push-ups. I mean, yeah. he just had that kid as a, a youngster with a very high tolerance to work and just this this drive. He pushed him so that everything else would be easy. Yeah. I mean, he made it so everything at home, all the training he did, all the wrestling practices were so fucking hard that everything else would be easy. Yeah. And look at him. UFC fucking middle welterweight champion, World and champion. and should have been the first time he fought GSP. Uh, Agreed. In my opinion, I mean, the, the he got the title with the Robbie Lawler fight, but I thought he, he I thought he beat GSP. Yeah. And the only people that disagree that I've talked to, or people that were like in that Henzo Gracie camp, that were a little bit biased and thought that George won like round one, which I didn't understand. Uh, I I think damage is more important than anything. And I think Johnny, without a doubt, did more damage in that fight. Like, they pointed to the, the guillotine attempt in the first round, but I didn't think that was a successful attempt. I thought that was, you know, I thought it was never close. Yeah. It's like, did you see um, uh, Scoggins versus John Moraga, this yeah. last fight? Yeah. The first guillotine was very close. The second guillotine locked it up. Yep. It was, George never had a guillotine like that. Nope. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like one of those where it was like Scoggins barely got out of that first guillotine where Moraga locked it up, yep. but he was in deep shit. Yep. And then he caught him with the second one. That's not what the kind of guillotine that Hendricks was caught in in that first round. So I didn't understand anybody saying that they thought that GSP won. A little bias, I think. You know, Sure. But I'm biased towards Hendricks, and I'll admit that. But watching and trying to be impartial... I think Hendricks clearly won. And I believe George and, and some of his team, I think they know. Because the two athletes, when they walk out, you know if you kind of won or lost. Mm-hmm. And I think that one, and it felt their mood, their energy, and just the way that they, you know, we interacted afterwards, very professional, respectful. But I think they knew that Johnny had won that fight, truly. How do you tell a fighter to stop? Is there is there a time where a fighter should be told to stop? Because if George was my friend... I would tell George to stop. Yeah. And the reason why I would tell George to stop is because we did some sort of a fight metric thing where we calculated all the times he'd been hit inside the octagon. And he had been hit in the head 880-something times over the course of his UFC career. Yeah. And I'm like, what is, what's the number where a guy can walk? Because if you talk to George now, he's lucid. You know, he speaks well. But I know that he was having migraines. I know that he was having memory issues. Yeah. And, um, and... Uh, I think there's only a certain amount of times a guy can fight. There's only a certain amount of blows a guy can take. And George, if he stopped now, could he have another fight? Yeah. Yeah, he definitely could. Could he come back and be great? Very possibly. But could he come back and take some damage that five years from now we're going to see a a much compromised George? And that's possible as well, right? Probably. And I've had this conversation with athletes before. And it's, it's difficult and it's emotional and it's... You know, it's in their best interest, and sometimes, you know, they've gotten mad, but they know it's out of love and care and concern, and it's there's a risk to reward. And, you know, anytime an athlete, whether you're an amateur or you're making millions of dollars, there's a risk. And what is the reward? Is it some sort of personal challenge? Are you trying to, you know, scare away a demon? Are you trying to provide a college, you know, education for your daughter? These are things that they get put on the scale, and they become right. intellectual conversations to have. And then you say, all right, is this worth the risk? But a guy like GSP, I mean, he's proven everything. He's a legend. 
Yeah, you know, yeah, without a doubt, he he really has proven everything he can prove. I mean, he can come back and beat other fighters, but is he ever going to elevate the status of his legend? He's one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest welterweight of all. It's him and Matt Hughes. Yeah, those are the two greatest welterweights of all time. Yeah, and you know, Matt is from a slightly different era. Their er eras overlap, but you know, in my opinion, Matt it was a game changer. You know, so I think he still goes down as possibly, you know, it's in the debate for who's the greatest. Sure. But George, he's not going to ever elevate where he's at. Where he's at is a fucking all-time legend. Yeah. You don't, you know, he's more of an all-time legend. I'll have one more fight, he'll be another all-time legend. No, he's yeah. an all-time legend. There you go. I mean, and all, as far as I know, he's very wealthy. I know he had to give a lot of money up to his fucking former manager, though. Ouch. Yeah. And there's a lot of grossness involved in that, man. Yeah. I had spoken about managers recently, and it kind of got spun the wrong way. I don't know if you heard anything. I'm, no. What you say? Talking to Ariel. I said, and the quote, so I hope nobody out there is going to quote this out of context, was athletes need to get rid of their, need to fire their managers and hire attorneys. And it wasn't meant to be that every athlete needs to get rid of the manager, because I said there's some great managers out there. But there's some managers out there that they have their hand too deep inside the athlete's pocket where the athlete can't excel and can't develop themselves as a professional because they're spending 20 and 30 percent of their purse and all their earnings going straight to their manager and then the athlete has to pay for an attorney to come in and do contract review then they have to pay for an agent to come in and bring in sponsorship then they have to pay a striking jujitsu wrestling strength coach then they have to pay their income taxes then they have to you know put food on the table for their family and you know at the ufc level where these contracts are much more strict and that's really what i was talking about it was during the kelvin gastelum um comments was at the ufc level there's not a lot of negotiation room for most there's it's more of contract review legalese and you know some of the managers came out and they said yeah you know they were pissed at me and i asked all, all of them specifically i said how many of your clients have come to you because their manager fucking sucked and they're like oh well, shit a bunch that's what i'm talking about right. well maybe you're awesome but at the same time, these athletes, they need attorneys to really look at the paperwork. And yeah, there's a building phase and you're getting them in from air. You're getting them notoriety and such to get to the UFC level. But because you get them there doesn't mean that you should stay there. And a guy like Mike Pyle, he fired his manager a, a few fights back. He talks directly with Joe Silva. He does all the negotiation. He gets to keep all of his money. He makes more money now. And he hires an attorney to come in and do the contract review and such on a per hour basis or a per contract basis. He speaks very openly about this. He's one of the guys who's in the UFC and he's one of the higher paid athletes Yeah, out there doing it. Well, you know, obviously I love the UFC. Obviously, um, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge honor for me to, to call the fights and to be a part of the organization. But I think the only way that the UFC is ever going to satisfy the athletes. I mean, the only way the athletes are ever going to be in a situation where they're completely, totally happy with what they get paid is if they're at the top of the heap. Yeah. I mean, when people compare it to Floyd Mayweather, like Floyd Mayweather made X amount of money. Do you know how many fucking people are Floyd Mayweather? One. Yeah. It's Floyd Mayweather. Period. And everybody else who fights him, they take a drastically reduced purse, and they're super lucky that they get that. Yeah. Like, whatever Maidana got for that first fight, a million bucks or something like that. Biggest payday of his career. Yeah. Right? And by the way, that's not what GSP get for fights. GSP got a lot more mon money than that. Yeah. Like, And GSP, as big as he was, is never the draw that Floyd Mayweather is. Floyd Mayweather is a draw, like, internationally, nationally. He's gigantic. I mean... Yep. The, the amount, and, and he's also the promoter. I mean, he's got a lot of shit going on. Unless a fighter becomes a part of a promotion, I mean, it's just not the same thing. You know, if the if the UFC, like when Oscar De La Hoya was Golden Boy Productions, and, yep. you know, when he was fighting as well and making insane amounts of money in that. Sure. You know, there's, again, there's only one Oscar De La Hoya. And there's also the UFC, like it or not, and I love it, they're essentially the number one game in town. Yeah. And it's not like there's a close number two. Yeah. Whereas Bob Arum, Golden Boy, you know, there's there's all these different promotions, the money team. There's a lot of different promotions when it comes to promoting fights. Whereas the UFC is like there's Bellator. You know, Bellator's not bad. They're on Spike TV. They're sure. doing real good. You know, I'm a big fan of Scott Coker. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Spike TV. But the reality is there's a goddamn huge... Who the fuck is the UFC heavyweight champion? Cain Velasquez. Who's the Bellator heavyweight champion? I don't even know who he is. I don't even is. know either, yeah. I don't know who it is. 
I know. Was it used to be Cole Conrad? Was he? No, maybe not even. He was, was he? but he retired because there was no money. The difference. Okay, there's Schlemenko. He's the the middleweight champion. Sure. But someone from his fucking camp talked him into fighting Tito Ortiz. Hope he got paid for which that. Which is that was like. I mean, it's like a grown man fighting a, a, a guy who is in high school. That's what it looked like. I mean, Tito was fucking enormous in that fight. Flamenco's probably truly a, a welterweight inside welterweight. the UFC, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. And somehow or another, he's fighting Tito. When Tito got on top of him, like, this dude is not getting off the bottom. Yep. Tito has very underrated submission skills as well. He's good. Yeah, you can't knock him. Yeah. But huge disparity. Yeah, just giant. And then, so, I mean, that's your middleweight champion. You just saw your middleweight champion get choked to sleep. Not good for anybody. By a guy who could fight at heavyweight. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah. Like. And they did that just to sell a pay-per-view. Yeah. And the whole thing was just preposterous. And I think that, uh, you know, unless that changes, there's the, 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 the amount of money fighters get, like, there's, it's not going to be the, the level that you're going to get in boxing. Yeah. Until boxing in the UFC, I mean, until there's a, I mean, maybe it'll be one of the new champions. Maybe it'll be Ronda Rousey that gets your first her first $50 million. Because she kind of has that transcendent appeal. Sure. I mean, she really is sort of transcending the sport. She's the biggest star right now in an MMA. Yeah. 